Okay, so this is a short little uh, demo of a uh, bench setup I've got of uh, my new proximity sensors for my new uh, hybrid that I'm building uh, along inside with the new controller. Uh, this uh, controller served me well, uh, but it certainly scares me for uh, longer run, run times. As I've kind of learned things down the line, uh, there's always ways to improve things. Uh, but in uh, short, these are uh, inductive proximity sensors. They're uh, 12 millimeters. Um, they run off of 12 volts DC power. Uh, simply put, uh, you build a little uh, small little 12 volt DC bus like I've got here uh, to distribute it uh, off of um, my Antec power supply. I've got two outputs on the power supply. I got a 5 volts and a 12 volts. Uh, funny enough, this was just mentioned on the forum earlier today. Uh, I haven't actually looked at the markings on the uh, printed circuit board since I built this, uh, and sure enough, there is nothing written on there telling you which is uh, plus or negative, uh, like there is on the unregulated uh, power output on the top. Uh, so it's something to be careful with. A uh, simple multimeter check will tell you which is which, and uh, there you go. So anyways, uh, I come off of the uh, power supply with 12 volts DC, come to my little terminal blocks uh, that are getting together uh, with uh, uh, push and jumpers, uh, run into my uh, rail pole relays, um, and then uh, these are relays are used to interface uh, with bringing power to the proximity switches. Uh, as well as uh, providing me uh, uh, closure for the uh, to the breakout board as a, a single input, uh, you can see I've got actually uh, a couple uh, jumpers uh, from each relay to the next. Uh, for me, I don't really care because this machine's rather simple. Uh, um, I'd rather not use up more uh, inputs than uh, I could. Uh, I'd rather save them. Uh, so I'm just ganging them together. So if I hit the end of access and uh, the proximity sensor stops the machine. Uh, it really doesn't make a difference to me which one it actually hits um, because the machine, I would like it to stop in any event, uh, the machine is small enough that I could locate it pretty quickly. Uh, so that's just to save me on using uh, four inputs, uh, I'm just going to use one on the uh, PMDX122 breakout board, um, which I've got right there. Uh, for this demo, I'm not actually running into the breakout board. Uh, I'm just going to show you. You're going to see a little LED pop up, uh, and that's about it. Uh, you can just imagine that it would alert you and mock, uh, say that uh, you've gone uh, beyond travel on, on that axis, uh, and you need to check it out. But uh, let me power the controller on, and I'll show you what's going on. Okay, now power is applied, uh, contactor just clicked. Um, you can hear the fan maybe just roar in the background. Um, so here we go, I'll show you. I've got uh, my 12 mil uh, proximity switch right here. Uh, and it's got a short uh, little cable whip. It's actually going to be probably too short for me. Uh, I really don't want to butt splice it. I'm probably going to have to get one from uh, Igus. Um, they make uh, continuous flex um, uh, uh, whips. Uh, and put ups of these with these uh, little quick disconnects um, that I can just install right on it and you know chuck these on the shelf and just not use them because they're not even uh, that well rated uh, for this type of application they're really meant to be put uh, on an application where they're just mounted on the machine and not in a cable carrier uh, but uh, here we go here's the 12 um, millimeter proximity switch it's got little LEDs surrounding the uh, major diameter or the exterior diameter uh, of the shell uh, and I can show you, uh, here's just the 8020 extrusion on the side of the machine. Uh, the aluminum, of course, um, takes uh, a, a bit, I'm not sure yet what the distance is, but it is significantly uh, shorter of a distance that it can sense with. Uh, for example, if I go to the uh, galvanized steel here, it'll uh, start lighting up, you know, probably between four, no more than uh, uh, three millimeters away. The aluminum, I bar barely, probably got like a mil or two off of it. Uh, to get the thing to light up uh, or to make that contact closure. Um, uh, so if you can imagine, uh, as this thing's mounted on your carriage, the machine moves. You drill a simple hole uh, or slot um, so that you know it's uh, active all the time, uh, so that you know it serves, a, serves as a dual purpose. Uh, as much as it will tell you if the machine's running at the end of the axis, it'll also tell you if you've jumped your rails for machines that don't have bearings on the bottom like the mechmates do. Uh, so you can see it just as I make into the slot, it, it uh, takes off. So that's what I'm planning on doing, just drilling a simple hole or slot. Uh, pro probably a slot so I have some kind of adjustment. And then obviously the steel, you can sense it much farther away. 
which is uh, very appealing if you've got steel rails. And uh, that's a quick little demo. Uh, I can actually even show you on the relight it. The little LED lights up as well. And that's it. Hopefully that explains a little bit, uh, shows a little background. Uh, any questions you have, just uh, let me know. Thank you.